Buying a house can be really overwhelming. Not only do you need to understand the contracts and the financing, on top of that, you have to make sure you're not buying a bad house, a house that's gonna end up costing you a lot of money or have awful resale value. These are the top houses that I advise my clients against buying, or at least make sure they think twice about. And if you do wanna buy one of these houses, I am gonna give you a few tips to help protect your bottom line because I myself am guilty of buying one of these houses. Let's jump in. So there really isn't a nice way to phrase this, but avoid buying a crappy, cheap new construction home. So here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm sure all over the world, there are some really big named and small name builders who cut a lot of corners and do not build quality or even safe houses. So we're talking really cheap material and fast, shoddy workmanship. I've listed some of these houses that are a year too old and you walk in and you immediately see that the house needs to be repainted the cabinets are falling apart and in some instances those are the best of the problems so there's one builder in charlotte that my clients send me all of the time because their prices are so good and there's a reason they're priced so much lower than other houses and unfortunately it's not because they have a big heart or they care about affordable housing so you will end up paying that difference in price eventually when you build with some of these cheap crappy builders so how can you determine if a new build is a bad buy so i'm going to give you two tips so first you want to get a buyer's agent to represent you who knows the local builders in their contracts who has experience selling new construction locally and can advise you through third-party inspections and that's the next tip you need to get a third-party inspection so this is an inspector that you hire through various stages of your bill to make sure things are being installed correctly and safely. I would not rely on county inspectors for these things and certainly don't rely solely on the builder. So the builder and the builder's rep are gonna have the builder's best interest at heart and in mind. So you really need to have your own representation before and after you go under contract for a new construction home. So next up are flipped houses. So if you're not an HGTV aficionado, Flipped houses are older, outdated homes that have been bought and immediately remodeled and relisted for profit. And it pains me to say this, but it is very rare to come across a home flipper who does a good and honest job. It's not impossible, but it's not common. The entire goal is for this flipper to make a profit. And you'd be surprised to learn a lot of these house flippers are inexperienced and they have a tendency to get in over their head. So they end up cutting a lot of corners to make a profit and not doing things that they're supposed to do. And the big problem is that flipped houses are very common in Charlotte. You're often gonna find these in prime locations as well. So I'm actually not gonna advise you against buying a flipped home, but what I will advise you against are buying certain flipped homes. So I would not buy a flipped house that doesn't have proper permits. Beyond being a safety hazard, home insurance will not cover unpermitted work. Also, if the cosmetic interior of the house looks poorly done, if the cabinets aren't aligned correctly, if doors won't shut easily, and if there's a bad paint job, if you can see these problems with your eyes, imagine what's going on behind the walls where you can't see. The next type of house I would avoid buying is a house that has outdated electric. So for one, old wiring systems can't handle modern electrical loads, right? They didn't have the same technology we have now back in the 60s. And rewiring a house can be incredibly expensive. It can also be a safety hazard. So this is one of the first things that I check whenever I'm showing a buyer an older home. So houses that were built before the 70s will sometimes have knob and tube or aluminum wiring, which is you do not want. Now the other thing I check are the electrical panels because there are a couple of electrical panels that were recalled many years ago and it's actually pretty common to see them in older houses in the Carolinas. And replacing an electrical panel isn't that expensive, but usually in my experience, if the panel hasn't been replaced, neither has the wiring. So next up are houses with specific type of plumbing I would avoid buying. So when you're looking at a house, it doesn't matter if it's old or new, check underneath and see what kind of plumbing the home has. Now this won't necessarily tell you what's happening underneath the house, but at least will give you an indication of what to expect. Now, most people know that you do not want galvanized, polybutylene, or lead piping. These can cause serious issues besides just low water pressure. We're talking busted pipes behind walls, mold, you name it. And another type of faulty plumbing that not a lot of people know about was common in the late 90s to about 2006, and it's called Durapex. Now I have sold plenty of houses with this type of piping with no problems, but from my understanding how faulty it is, it's gonna depend on how it was installed and what county the home is in. I could totally geek out and tell you the science behind it, but I, I will spare you. But all that to say, I would not buy a house that needs to be completely repiped. It could cost you tens and thousands of dollars, but you will find that some of these older homes will have sections that have been updated. So as long as the majority of the piping is up to date and you get the okay from a plumber, I wouldn't see a problem in moving forward is way less risky. The next up is buying a house that's on a steep hill or uneven land. So this might sound really odd if you're coming from an area that's really hilly. Here in Charlotte, even though we are a little bit rolling, we don't have very many areas with steep elevation. So if you come across a house like this, you wanna make sure that there's proper drainage and grading. So many of our houses are built on cross spaces, not slabs. 
So you do not want water pooling underneath of your house. And because we've had so much rain over the last few years, I've come across a lot of homes that yards have been eroded. So I would avoid buying a house, especially an older home at the base of a hill or on top of a hill. New construction homes usually have systems that will mitigate some of the water risk, but in the older ones, you don't see it as much. And if you do decide to buy one of these houses, just understand that you may need to eventually regrade or add a retaining wall. And I also wouldn't buy a house with a really steep driveway. This is something uh, that I have had problems with in the past selling homes that have steep driveways. They're not good on cars. Even though we don't get really snow here in Charlotte, it's still not ideal to be driving up or down a steep driveway in winter. And I actually had a really hard time narrowing down this list because there are so many different types of houses that I wanted to tell you about. So let me know if you want a part two. I'm happy to share all of the warnings and horror stories that I've learned and all the years I've been doing this. My name is Milena. I'm a local Charlotte realtor. If you're thinking about buying a house or selling a house here in Charlotte or anywhere else in the country, please don't hesitate to reach out. I have partners all over the place. I'm happy to connect you. Please like and subscribe. Now let's get to the most common house I see. Next up is gonna be homes that have major structural issues. And this is gonna be the most expensive and complicated problem a house can have. When you're looking at homes, doesn't matter the age, the two big indicators that a home will have structural issues are gonna be the cracks and sloping of the floor. Now, tiny hairline cracks and slightly sloping floors are fine. It just means a house is settling. But what you're wanting to look out for are horizontal cracks or cracks that go like various ways that you can fit a coin into. And when it comes to sagging of the floors, you can usually feel it before you you see it. So when I'm showing an older home, I make sure to walk every corner of a room to make sure that I can kind of get a feel for what's happening underneath. Obviously the home inspector is going to give you a better indication, but still keep these things in mind when you're showing a home. And if a house has a crawl space, definitely peek in, make sure there's no standing water or a rotted joist. It's definitely not fun being under a crawl space, but it's better to know ahead of time what's happening than before you're under contract. So next up, we're gonna talk about HOAs. Now I promise you not all HOAs are evil and most of the homes built after the 90s in Charlotte are gonna be part of an HOA. And if you're in a master plan community, you will definitely have an HOA, you can't avoid them. But there are things that you really need to look into before buying a house that is part of an HOA. You need to have a clear understanding of the finances and make sure that there's no pending litigation. So 99% of banks will not lend on a home if the HOA has an outstanding debt or is involved in litigation. And that litigation can be between vendors or current or former homeowners. And when it comes to the financing, you also wanna make sure you know exactly how much your fees will be. So some HOAs will have additional quarterly or yearly dues that you're required to pay. And you don't wanna buy a home only to find out that you have to pay an additional thousand dollars a year to live there. You also wanna make sure that there's no special assessments that are really high. This is a fee to cover unexpected expenses or major projects in a community that are not covered by the budget. And these are all things that your realtor will help you figure out. The one thing almost all of my out of town clients point out whenever they come visit Charlotte is how green we are. We have a ton of beautiful, big, Old trees in this city. So you're gonna especially find these in older neighborhoods close to uptown. They're beautiful, but they can cause a lot of damage, especially if they're too close to your house. Obviously there's a risk of limbs falling when a storm hits. On the rare occasion, a tree can even be uprooted and fall on your house. But I've also even seen trees do structural damage, depending on how big the roots are and how close they are to the home. So when you're looking at a house, make sure you don't have one of these big guys right on top of your home. So depending on the size, it can be tens and thousands of dollars to remove these trees. And another aspect not a lot of people think about is when it comes to natural light and trees. So my first house had a ton of trees. Bought it in winter when all the leaves were dead. Come summer, I did not realize how much the leaves just shaded the house and it really made it feel like a dungeon. Even after cutting all of the trees back, it was still really dark. And even if you yourself don't care about natural light, 81% of home buyers do. So keep this in mind for resale purposes. So next up, I would not buy a condo or a townhome that is unwarrantable. So these are types of homes that do not meet the criteria for a lender or bank to lend on. So this is going to drastically reduce your financing options to purchase this type of house. You're either going to have to pay cash or if you do find a lender, you're going to find one that will give you a really high interest rate. And in addition to overcoming the hurdle of just purchasing these houses, once you purchase it, you have to worry about resale value. When you decide to sell the home, any future buyer is going to have the same issues that you have. So you're going to have a very limited pool of home buyers that are able to get financing. So this can lead to the property sitting for a really long time and it certainly sells less than a condo or townhome that is warrantable. And some reasons that a condo or townhome wouldn't be warrantable would be that they don't have adequate insurance, they have poor maintenance, the HOA's health, as I mentioned before. Also the ownership type. If there are too many rentals in a complex, there's one high rise condo in uptown that has too much commercial space, so it is unwarrantable. So it really is best to avoid these type of houses just to protect your bottom line. So next up are homes that are synthetic stucco or EIF. So these homes have a notorious reputation here in our area. So back in the 70s and 80s, many of the installations were done in 
correctly. And that led to moisture getting trapped behind the stucco. And this causes serious issues like mold rot and even structural decay. So these problems are exasperated when you're in a humid and rainy area like Charlotte, North Carolina. The repairs can not only be really costly, they can also be really complicated. Now on the plus side, you can absolutely get an inspection done and not all synthetic stucco homes are bad. So if you get the inspection, you get the okay, it's fine. But the big issue I personally would be concerned about is the stigma that these homes have. Because of their reputation, buyers and even lenders sometimes are really cautious about buying or lending on synthetic homes, no matter the age. So these houses typically take a while to sell and almost always sell lower than their counterparts. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Here's all my info. It's also down below in the description. If you're thinking of buying a house or selling a house, don't hesitate to reach out and I look forward to connecting.